Welcome to vocabulary lesson number seven. This is your first of three videos for your third overall vocabulary additional assessment. There will be 20 words in this video and the other two videos, therefore we will be working with 60 vocabulary words overall. So let's go ahead and get started. So for your first word, you have frivolous, and it's an adjective. And this adjective means not serious, trivial, or silly. In a sentence we read, after trying to sue his teacher for making him do grammar homework, his punishment was to write, I will not file frivolous lawsuits over and over again. So we see here that frivolous is most closely aligned with the definition of trivial. It would be a lawsuit that wouldn't go anywhere, that was over something really insignificant, and not really something worth legal. Uh, action. Other ways that you might hear the word frivolous, so you might hear frivolous actions, a uh, frivolous argument, um, a frivolous trip. Essentially what frivolous does is it makes whatever it's describing sound pointless and unnecessary. So that's how you would use the adjective frivolous. So for our next word we have Taciturn, which is also an adjective. So taciturn means quiet, saying little. So here we have the conversation between Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy did not amount to much as he was highly taciturn. So something to know about the adjective of taciturn, it doesn't necessarily mean shy. So taciturn describes someone who's quiet, but almost in a snooty way. So it's not someone who's shy and bashful. It's not necessarily someone who's introverted. It's someone who's quiet in a way that makes them seem arrogant and possibly a little mean. So that's how you would use the word taciturn. And it's aptly used here because as you can see, Mr. Darcy, who's being described as taciturn, looks a little gruff and unfriendly, making it an accurate use of the word. All right, so for our next word we have infamous, which is also another adjective, and it means notorious and scandalous. So these are two very different words, but both of them make up what infamous is. So let's take a look at this sentence. So Jack Nicholson's Here's Johnny line is considered one of the most infamous scenes in movie history. So here it's definitely notorious. It's an incredibly notorious scene. It's very scary. But infamous also has connotations of the idea of being known because it's scary or scandalous or somehow outside of the box. Um, so make sure you keep that in mind when you use infamous um, because it tends to have connotations that aren't necessarily negative, but it suggests something that shocked people. So that's probably the best way to think about it. So it's something that's notorious due to the fact that it's shocking. And oftentimes that shocking aspect is scandalous in nature. All right, so next we have the word redundant. So redundant means repetitive, unnecessary, and superfluous, and is an adjective. So a truly redundant argument, Bugs and Daffy spent another hour refusing to agree whether or not it was rabbit season or duck season. So redundant means something happens over and over again, and as you can see, their argument is going over and over and over. And that is the word redundant, the adjective that is describing the type of argument they're having. So for our next word, we have authoritarian, um, which again is an adjective. And it's an adjective that suggests that something is like a dictator. So here we have the population rallied against the authoritarian government, refusing to submit to unfair laws and imprisonment any longer. So you're going to note that when you see authoritarian, it's usually being used in reference to a government or a leader within a government. Uh, sometimes it might be used in a silly way to, like, for instance, to talk about a parent, but ultimately what's being done there is it's comparing the par parent to an authoritative leader. If you see authoritarian teacher, it's being used to compare the teacher to an authoritarian leader. So do you know that it means like a dictator and it tends to have to relate to a government that is restrictive. All right, our next word is exhaustive, which is an adjective, and it means thorough and complete. So exhaustive tends to sound really negative because exhausted um, is a negative word that means very, very tired, but exhaustive actually doesn't have a negative connotation. It's actually pretty positive. So Amani took exhaustive notes for her religions in literature class determined to receive an A on the upcoming test. So what exhaustive here means is very complete without any holes, lacking nothing, uh, 
completely, completely complete, if that makes sense. So exhaustive, the only aspect that might be slightly negative is it might have gone too far. So sometimes if you take exhaustive notes, you might say, oh, I took too many notes. Um, but ultimately exhaustive, don't confuse it with exhausted because they are not, they do not mean exactly the same thing. All right, so our next word is profuse, which is an adjective, and it means flowing freely, generous, and excessive. All right, so Jordan Peele sweated profusely while waiting to hear whether or not his project would receive funding. So profusely means abundantly, and here we have profuse, the adjective, and here it's being used as an adverb. The L-Y has been added on, and we can see that he's sweating profusely. Do note that it has a couple meanings, so flowing freely is clear clearly how it's been using here, but it can also mean generous to provide a profuse amount of food or a profuse amount of money um, and excessive um, to be profusely talkative. Uh, it can be used in multiple ways. All right, so for our next word, we have expedient, which is an adjective. We have had this word before. Again, it's on the list twice, so I put it in the videos twice. Its meaning is useful for affecting a desired re result I'm in a quick manner. So the website provided quick student feedback about the quality of the courses, which was an expedient tactic in helping their peers select what they would take next semester. So expedient is the adjective. Expedite would be the verb. So you expedite a system to have expedient tactics. And it both means to. Um, create a useful and a desirable result, but make sure you understand that it's in a quick manner. All right, so for our next word, we have fastidious. That's fast, not fast ideas, it's fastidious, which is an adjective, and it means not easy to please and overly critical. So, <laughs> hashtag not impressed. Lucius Malfoy had many poor qualities to his character. However, one, of, one was that he was quite fastidious refusing to be impressed by anyone, including his own son. So here we have an adjective describing Lucius Malfoy, and again, it means he's not easy to please and he's quite crit critical. So for our next word, we have prosaic, which is an adjective, and it means uninspired, dull, and banal. And it would be worthwhile to go back and look at the definitions for banal, insipid, and compare those two to prosaic, because they're three words that are pretty similar, and you'll want to make sure to make note of how they are different, because the differences are subtle, but they are important. So here we have Taylor had written several amazing essays for his English class, but for some reason he couldn't do it this time. Every draft he wrote was filled with prosaic details that would put his teacher right to sleep. So here, prosaic, it kind of, uh, it, it relies upon this definition of uninspired. So it's the idea that his details are uninspired, they're forced, um, there's nothing creative and unique and interesting about them. So keep that in mind as that's what makes prosaic unique in comparison to insipid and banal. All right, so our next word is philanthropy, which is a noun, and it's a desire to help mankind. So here we see, once becoming the prince of Agrabah, Aladdin immediately began practicing philanthropy, giving everything he could to his people. So this word might remind you of the word miser because they are definitely in opposition. So someone who practices philanthropy, giving everything that they can to others, would not be a miser who hoards their possessions for themselves. All right. Um, do you know that philanthropy is the adjective? Well, wait, nope, it's a noun. But this is the thing of the noun. If you want to use it as a person, you would use philanthrope. So instead of the Y, you just put an E, and then you're talking about the person who practices philanthropy, both of which are nouns. All right, so your next word is languid, which is an adjective, and it means slow, tired, drooping, and weak. Now, what animal comes to mind with the word languid? Oh, wait. I thought this was going to be a picture of a sloth. That must be something else. Well, sloths are languid, but so are these three people. So the trio moved at a languid pace, exhausted from the journey that had taken them across Japan. So languid, we see that they're exhausted um, from walking, and that makes them languid. So languid can definitely mean drooping and weak. However, languid also has connotations of being very lazy, which is why the sloth came to mind, because they're known for being very slow and relaxed, and languid can also have those connotations. It doesn't necessarily have to mean exhausted, but it can, as that is an aspect of its definition. So it can go either way. All right, so for our next word, we have astute, 
which is perceptive and clever, a very positive, a positively connotative word. It's an adjective. So here we have, at first Rachel made an observation about relationships. Being alone sucks. However, she later made a much more astute observation that being alone had made her a stronger and happier person. So being astute, again, I said, has positive connotations. It's the idea of coming to some kind of very wise realization and sharing that realization and therefore being astute. All right. So... Next, we have authentic, which is an adjective, real, genuine, another positively connotative word. So the authentic apology melted the mother's heart, and she let her son go to the birthday party. So authentic, again, it means genuine. Um, and yeah, that's your adjective, pretty straightforward. So our next word is going to be brevity, which is a noun, and it means briefness. So one thing to note is that this is not an adjective. A lot of people make that mistake. Brevity is in fact a noun, it's a thing. So Ron Swanson summarized Hamlet with amazing brevity. See how it's being treated as a thing. Hamlet dies. Thanks Ron Swanson. So brevity, make sure that you know that it's a noun that means briefness. So it's the act of saying, not the act, it's a short, a short statement. So think of it that way. So brevity is a short statement that's provided, um, which is a thing. A short statement is a thing. So with amazing brevity. That one's a little more difficult. Make sure you understand how to use it. Um, another way it's commonly used is you might have heard the saying brevity is the soul of wit. Um, so what it's saying is that short statements is what makes something witty. And so it's used as a noun there as well. So our next word is relevant, which is also an adjective. It means pertinent, important to know. When writing her science report, uh, Jamila wanted to use relevant sources, so she paid special attention to the author's dates and origins of the scholarly sources she selected. So relevant is an adjective. Pretty straightforward. We should know that one. All right, our next word is incoherent, which is an adjective, impossible to understand, chaotic. So one thing and that's important to know a lot, if we do already know incoherent, we definitely know this definition, something that's difficult to understand, but make sure that you know that this word has connotations of being chaotic in nature. Um, so if someone mumbles, they are incoherent, but incoherent is also used when things are all over the place. So if there's a bunch of talking people in a room chaotically, that would definitely be a excellent time to use the word incoherent. So when the teacher called on Timmy to answer the question, his response was incoherent due to his hood muffling his mouth. Incoherent, adjective. All right, our next word is mitigate, which is a verb, um, a verb that's oftentimes used in law. So to make milder, to make less severe. Darren hoped that the fallen the fallen speed limit sign would mitigate his speeding ticket, but the judge did not agree with his reasoning. So mitigate is a verb, and as I said, it's oftentimes used um, as legal jargon, um, and it means to lessen. So he was hoping that his speeding ticket would be lessened, but unfortunately it is not. So that's what mitigate means. All right, our next word is reprehensible, and it's an adjective, and it means shameful and bad. And now when we say reprehensible, we're saying very shameful, very bad. So when you think of this word, know that it's a more intense version of these words. If you said shameful, you could say shameful, but if you want to say very shameful, reprehensible would be the better word to use. The unforgivable curses were forbidden due to the reprehensible outcomes that resulted for the victims. And if you are familiar with Harry Potter, it is that people die. Therefore, if you're thinking about things like murder, you know that that is reprehensible because it's not just shameful to murder. It's not just bad to murder. It's reprehensible. It's unforgivable. So make sure to keep that in mind when using the word reprehensible. Know that it's connected with concepts of being unforgivable um, and really, really bad. All right, our next word is um, augment. So um, with augment, you may remember a previous word, which is enhance. So the word enhance, use the defining word of augment, and therefore for augment, you can also use the defining word of enhance. They are synonymous. But augment means to add, to increase, to make bigger, and is a verb. So we have cellular and other handheld devices now have apps that use augmented reality, um, such as, typo, showing the names and purposes of different buildings. So that's using this part of the definition to add. So it's the idea that 
we're using iPads and iPhones and when we hold them up to the world it adds these images to it and that's why we call it augmented reality. You can also use augmented such as augmented lips in which women or men make their lips bigger um, because they want